Oh man, I was doing so good and then I had to move so I didn't hit the hose with the bottle. As I was saying, yeah, that'll work, right? If I don't need a funnel, it'll be a miracle. Well, I needed one, okay? I look rough. Um, if you're wondering why I look like Harvey Dent after he got put in a fire. Jesus, I, I thought he was dead. Half. I found poison sumac and decided to just bathe in it. Blisters everywhere, both of my arms. Uh, my face is, like I said, ay ay ay. It's like a horror movie. Anyway, we have a ton of lime to haul, over 800 tons for uh, the neighbor, and I can usually get about two loads a day. That's without the bridge being closed. I could probably get three, maybe, maybe four. Uh, with the bridge closed, it's probably gonna be more like two loads a day, which is, I can haul about 21 ton, 21 and a half. Call it 20, I'm gonna need about 40 loads, which is gonna take about 20 days, <sighs> yeah. We'll see what we can get done, and hopefully this clears up soon and you don't have to look at this anymore because, trust me, I get it, it's horrifying. Well, I stepped out of the truck and Dad took one look at me and said, good God, man, go to the doctor. Go get a shot or something, please. Just get away from me. So I scared him enough that that's going to be my plan for the day. I'm going to run to the doctors, get a shot or something, some steroids, get my face to stop swelling. Hopefully my eyelids don't swell shut or anything like that. Maybe get some of that Zanfell or whatever it is, that paste that you can kind of mix up with water and spread it over your blisters and whatnot. And I don't know. We'll see what we can do, but I got to do something about it. Because it just, during the heat of the day, it gets worse and worse, obviously. It swells up even worse, and if I sweat, it's a miserable experience. Good afternoon. Um, I haven't been to the farm in about a month now, so... Uh, with good reason, with good reason. My wife and I finally had our wedding ceremony after two years and uh, went on a honeymoon to the U.S. Virgin Islands. That was an experience, to say the least. Just put it this way, after the hurricanes, it definitely looks like a third world country at this point. So, um, other than that, the beaches and everything were absolutely beautiful. Nothing against the place, but um, it was a great honeymoon. The flight back home from Puerto Rico. I sat down next to patient zero and uh, this woman was coughing, sneezing all over the place where we were eating a 17 course meal the entire flight back to Chicago and ended up giving me hand, foot and mouth disease, which I didn't know that adults could get. I mean, I knew you could get it, but I didn't think it'd be that bad, but it's actually worse getting it as an adult than it is as a child. So I had to deal with that for the last 14 days after being gone for another week for the wedding and honeymoon. And uh, yeah, it was basically like having fire ants and fiberglass in my mouth 24 7 with little blisters just everywhere um on the on my gums the front of my gums all in the, my throat <clears throat> couldn't eat it's insanely contagious extremely contagious so i just avoided everyone like the plague including the farm so that is that yeah anyway by the end of it i was getting so bored of just sitting at home i decided you know what I took, I took my wife down to the Ozarks, dropped her off at their family home, whatever. She could take a little vacation while I'm sick. I said, I'll just come back home and do something to the house, get something done, remodel the bathroom, clean up the yard, whatever. Anyway, so I decided that uh, I'll just go ahead and grab the telehandler, the genie from the farm, and get the yard cleaned up. And so I did just that. I went. I was still a little sick. I mean, I still had blisters all over my mouth, whatever, but... I just, I was avoiding dad, he was gone anyway, so I just, I picked it up, got the car trailer, hauled it over to my house, started pulling all the trees out of my yard, um, well pumps, stuff like that, just getting it cleaned up, it needed done. And anyway, <clears throat> I finally, the next day, feel pretty good. Genie, I'm like, finally, I'm not sick anymore, this is great. 
tear out a flower bed, ground hornet's nest is underneath the flower bed, get stung multiple times, say, okay, not doing that, wait for them to calm down, maybe go kill them later, go to the front of the house, tear out a vinyl fence. The entire hollow fence is lined full of wasps. Get stung even more, which I am allergic to stings. So I break out in hives. Go inside. Whatever. I have hives the rest of the night. Wake up. Hives are gone. But I still have this rash all over my arms. Everywhere. And my face is still swollen, red with bumps all over it. And uh, I might have a shot of it on here of when it was pretty bad, but uh, yeah, poison ivy. Um, it was all over my face to the point where I looked like I had been just attacked. And uh, my eyes, it got in my eyes, the poison ivy. It still is, it's still under my eyelids and stuff. It's very itchy, really annoying. Um, but yeah, so I, I just, I was recovering from that as well because your eyes swell up, your face, you know, it's just, it's never a good thing. Sure, I'm better now. Face isn't as swollen. It's still a little red, but not too bad. Um, obviously, I still have it on my arms. But I think we're fi finally healthy enough to get back to the farm. Seriously, it is, I think today is like day 27 since I've been here. And I have a lot of work to do. We have got some lime hauling to do, a lot, not some, a lot of lime hauling to do. And I, I, it should have been getting done like a month ago, but you know, life happens. Like I said, we decided to have our wedding ceremony finally. We're on our honeymoon, you know, we deserve that. The plan today, the plan is to get this trailer unhooked and get it hooked up to the dump trailer, which is sitting on the hog light over there. So we can start hauling lime tomorrow. I'm not going to start today. I was still feeling my eyes were still pretty bad. And I honestly, I didn't sleep at all because I'm on that prednisone or whatever it is, that steroid. And uh, it causes insomnia. And I am like this until about 5 a.m. So it's just one of the, the, about the only medication I take that really has bad side effects for me. But uh, yeah, so anyway, I've, had, I've been running about two hours of sleep. My eyes are constantly watering. It's almost like I have a stigmatism, like 24-7 because of this ivy in my eyes. Um, so I figured I'll just get everything, I'll come today, later, just get everything around to where I'm ready to go. And then tomorrow, we'll hammer on. It's not like I'm doing anything crazy. Just hauling lime. Easy job. But for those of you that uh, don't know how to uncouple a trailer from the semi, it's really quite easy. Just make sure your parking brake and your trailer brake are on. Make sure these are pulled out. Because you are going to take the glad hands off. Well, we can take the electrical off first. Just get that out of the way. This one's usually stuck. It's very annoying. I'll be back in... 30 seconds. Okay, that is out of there. So you take the glad hands off. Now everything is off the back of the trailer that is connected to the truck. And these actually have a special little place for them to ride. Granted, I'm just going across the barnyard, so it's not that big a deal, but you can throw them in here if you want to. Okay, you're going to pull this little handle here to disengage the fifth wheel plate. There we go. Pull up and forward and then out. I've already got the jacks kind of halfway, halfway down, or most of the way down, sorry. Now some guys will actually release all the air from the trailer and then release the air from the rear of the semi, the axle here. We'll lower the the rear end of the tractor which you can do from the cab just from the switch but and then they'll uncouple but I just like to leave it all aired up and then just what I'll do is I'll lift up this trailer with the jacks 
just enough to where I can see daylight coming through between the fifth wheel plate and the trailer, the apron of the trailer there. And uh, that way when I go to hook up again, I can just let the air out of the truck, drive under it, and then let it up so I don't scrape any of the grease off of the fifth wheel plate. Anyway, you can see some light through there, maybe. I don't know if you can or not, but I sure as heck can. There's a little gap of light coming through, so it should be good to go. We'll go ahead and just put that back. We should be able to just drive away now. She's uncoupled. Everything's off the back. And voila really nothing to it obviously with the dump trailer you need hydraulics so we've got a wet kit that's what this box is right here on the back and uh, we'll just connect a hose to the back of the truck here be able to give that trailer hydraulics for the lift cylinders that's the only difference I don't know what that is Canadian thistle or something I don't know it's just really tall so it finally got rain and of course it was all the rain came while I was gone so maybe I need to stay away from the farm I don't know so I'm gonna drag a bunch of gr grease along that yeah yeah okay so I'll get to about there so anyway I'll go ahead and flip this off start pumping air back into the rear end it'll start lifting the trailer a little bit but we're gonna get connected before it does that now that I think it's connected, just put her in drive. And I'll just watch, make sure that I'm dragging tires and not uncoupling from the trailer. Yep. Handle is in place. So kingpin should be locked in there, yep. We are lifting off the ground. No big deal. Now we do the same. Bring up the uh, jacks. And then we'll go connect everything in the front there. All the glad hands and the hydraulic hose, we'll get that all connected and we're good to go. We'll go ahead and get this hose connected first. It's just gonna swing around here. I'm gonna chain it up to the back of the cab and then connect it to this here, which this is supposed to be a brass cap on here, but we lost it, and for some reason we can't buy a new one, or we, we haven't found one anyway. And uh, this is actually off of a Core Life water bottle. And I kind of just, I seen that, the inside here, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if that fit in there. And uh, it does really well, it stays on. So, I don't know. Do with that information what you will, but I can't hold you while I'm doing this, so. I keep forgetting that my microphone is on me all the time now, so I can still talk to you even when I'm not even near you. Go ahead and get the electrical and the glad hands hooked up now. These are supposed to be color-coded. One is supposed to be blue, one is supposed to be red. We just have a red handle here and on the actual glad hand itself to, to make the difference. <laughs> These hoses are probably supposed to be color-coded. I'm not too sure on the laws there, but we do have the color coding here, so the reason, the only reason that uh, this one is blue is it kept breaking, it kept snapping, the line did. And we found this really thick hose, it's a lot thicker than this, I don't know if you can see that from here, but it's a lot thicker than the other one, and this one just kept snapping, we don't know why. And so we had this on hand and we just put it on here and it hasn't broken since, so we never changed it. So if the police show up, And give me a fine for the hoses. I'll know one of you ratted me out. And actually, this one is just lights. I don't have an automatic tarp, unfortunately. Okay, we are all hooked up. Glad hands, electrical, hydraulic hose. Should be good to go. Hydraulics is reading low. Might need some fluid. I don't know. Sometimes it reads a little weird until I get it hooked up and everything kind of flowing. Next order of business gonna just be pulling this out 
and making sure the hydraulics are going to flow if I've got enough hydraulic oil, if I've got that hose tight enough. There's a few things that could happen to where it either won't lift or it won't come down very fast. So we just need to check that. Make sure the brakes aren't stuck. Got the trailer brakes off. Looks like it's going to roll. Brakes are fine. Pull this out. Check the tires while it's lifting. Hopefully while it's lifting. Okay, I got to remember how to do this. Drive. You gotta have the brake on, brake push down to go to drive. Drive, PTO on, back to raise, throw it in neutral, hit the gas. I would say that it's low on hydraulic oil. So we'll go put some in. Oh, we got a little high tran. I'm not going to make any distasteful jokes. But we should be able to just pour this whole thing in and, and then she should go. Now, if I don't need a funnel... Alright, we're good. They put the fill on top here and the sight gauge is on the side, so I have no idea where the heck I'm at. That's usually how most engineering goes. So we're just going to dump it all in. Call it good. Oh man. I was doing so good and then I had to move. So I didn't hit the hose with the bottle. As I was saying, yeah that'll work right? If I don't need a funnel it would be a miracle. Well, I needed one, okay? Tires seem good. Axles, or the hubs are full. I think it looks okay. I think we're good to go. I mean, seriously, how amazing is this thing? I am like a solid, I don't know, 100 feet away. Still talking to you guys. You can probably see me now on the camera. This thing is awesome. Oh yeah, and I forgot I even got this fancy little remote that I can shut you off from here too. Keep forgetting I have this thing. But that is gonna be it for me for today. I am itching severely. My uh, my blisters are getting very red. My face is starting to itch real bad. And my eyes are getting starting to burn and all that because I'm starting to sweat. So I should have, give me one more day of steroids. Tomorrow I'll be in the air conditioning of the truck. It's too late to go get a little gravel anyway, or a little lime. I do need a little gravel for my house. I tore out an old well that I didn't realize that I had in the middle of the city. Um, and so I got to fill that. So I was trying to find some trucks to haul me gravel and Unfortunately, there's just there's no drivers out there anymore. So the what little companies there are left to haul, they're just all booked, busy. They're not going to do a little 20 ton job for some Joe Schmo. So it's impossible to find anybody. So I guess I'm just going to be taking that to my house in the middle of town and uh, dumping that in the middle of my driveway, trying to miss all the power lines. So that'll be fun. But that's kind of how it is these days. You just if you want it done, you got to do it yourself. So. Anyway, I will be here tomorrow, and uh, we'll officially start the lime hauling.